Welcome to the Tea and Trails podcast. Bonjour tout le monde. That means hello, everyone. Oh, Gary, it's blowing Gary's mind. How are you doing? <laughs> Happy Monday. Happy half term. Happy post half term. Who knows? Happy, happy, happy. Just happy. Just here, making it through another week. Thanks to all our partners and patrons who support the show. We have Precision Fuel and Hydration, Om, Tiki Boo, Mountain Fuel, Outdoor Active, Vela Forte, Silver, Active Root, the Centurion Running Store, Protein Rebel, Sportshoes.com, Big Bubble Hats, X Miles, Formside Farm, Cottages, and Yugoku Projects. If you'd like some awesome discounts, support our partners, and of course, the show, me and Gaza. I say the show, me and Gaza. And of course, the production team behind the scenes. Boy, <laughs> Gaza. <laughs> Gaza. <laughs> Please consider joining Patreon. Maybe even treat yourself over. Oh, I've seen some. Can you get me a Summit Crazy t shirt? Like some awesome Teen Trials merch. Loved the reel we were shared uh, over, uh, over the weekend. Oh. Oh, awesome t-shirts. T-shirt. I'm not going to buy one, but when I win Winter 200, you can buy me one, Gary. Oh, yeah, we can do that. I'll dip into the Patreon money. <laughs> oh, what are your own pocket, you? How uh, many weeks do your children get off after um, Esme's mega holiday? George's just got the week. Two. You know, because <laughs> why? Why would you go to school for more than, I think they did, what, a month? Two weeks holiday. And so far, in that two weeks holiday, we have had... Five days of continuous rain. I don't mind the rain. I don't mind the mud. I don't mind them going out in the rain. You just have to put a good coat on. Skin's waterproof, blah, blah, blah. What I hate is the washing it then creates. I don't like bringing the dog in from the a rainy, muddy run. Oh, my God. Let's not. Let's not start this on a down. Come on. A pick it up. <laughs> come on. Come on. You're asking me to pick it up. Oh, wow. <laughs> Welcome to episode... 44. This week we share the mics with Danielle Ledbury. Danielle's book, Why We Run, is due for release any minute now. It's a wonderful book filled with emotional and inspiring stories. And it was a real treat to spend some time chatting with Danielle. Also, we have Brew with the Coaches, Tales from the Trails, and our weekly catch up. Super stoked to have Precision Fuel and Hydration as our podcast show sponsor. I decoupled my electrolytes and fuels for my double long run, Gary. Um, like it. Liked Successful. it. Successful. job. Do you want me to go into it now? It's quite a bit of deets. People interested in that? I love the deets. Yeah. I love the deets. Okay. So I just had the electrolytes, not the fizzy one, the sachet, in one yeah. bottle. I had water in the other. And then I just had my fuel in my belt. So easy access. And then what I did was I ate my fuel and then I put the wrapper in the back of the belt. So when I got home, I could get all the wrappers out to yes. count up my grounds. Oh my God, such pro. As I got all the wrappers out, my second, my second of the back to back, I it had been it had rained the whole run, which was a challenge in itself to then fuel. But I thought this is pretty much what it's going to do on this half dance way, isn't it? It's going to piss a god. I keep eating. My friend who'd come come with me and then had come inside was. I would say she was impressed, Gary. She said, not only have you eaten so much food, when did you do all that eating? Because I, because <laughs> she was she was fresh legs. So up every hill, she would just go a little bit further ahead of me. So I would just use that as a chance to just get out a little bit more fuel, shove it in, get it in. I set my watch every 25 minutes to eat. I tell you what, though, because I've always relied on calories in my bottle to have half my fuel. Yeah. It is very hard work to try and get. So the first day I did, I managed about 50 grams over the, I did a three, three hours. No, sorry. I did five and a half hours. It equaled about, because I find the first hour quite hard to eat because I've only just had my breakfast. Yeah. So that sort of skews the data a little bit because then I've started eating a little bit more. And then the second day I had, a, I managed a little bit more. I managed 60 an hour. And that still felt like loads, and I but I want to get up to like 70, 80. So I need another packet of, but I tell you, I tell you what worked to treat. I love the Velo Forte gels and then the precision hydration little squares as well. Oh. Mix it up. Mix it up. The only thing I'd say with both of them, your packaging drives me up the wall. It's raining, your fingers are like numb, and you cannot open the packaging. You're like add it with your teeth. A bit of, There's got to be a reason though, with the chews. And the chews for Vela Forte, they've got that uh, little cardboard sleeve. Then I suppose be... it's to stop them, probably to stop them sticking. Please, someone explain it to me. Don't, and I know I, you know, normally I'll undo them or I'll put them in another bag, and I hadn't done that mainly because I just wanted to really know how much I'd eaten and to go through the process of getting them out and unpacking them. Oh, am I going to have it all unpacked ready? You're going to are you going to open it for me, Gary? Maybe that's something we need to add to the notes: is that everything has to be open. I have to deliver it to you. <laughs> and if it's not open, <laughs> I'll then be calling you. 
<laughs> anyway, rose petals. <laughs> I'll tell you all about her in a minute. Don't forget, uh, Patreons get 15% off and anyone can get 15% off their first precision fuel and hydration order with the code TNTRAILS15, all caps locks, text, that's TNTRAILS15. My case study is up on the Precision, precision Fuel and Hydration website. Has it got your vital stats in there, Gary? <laughs> it's got it all in there. It's quite interesting because, you know, there's loads of stuff then. You're trying to recall uh, the, the, the week. But in the end, they have they give the evidence a score on how accurate they think it is. And I got a, a three out of five. <laughs> That sounds, like you... my, that sounds like my maths tests at school. Basically, tried. that was my report. You really tried. You really tried. Uh, Ooh, but it was good. Up. It's all up there. It's interesting. And there's, it's not just um, ultra running. My goodness me, lots of different sports are there. Robin Cassidy, female winner. Her date was up there. She's a four out of five, I think, for her. <laughs> oh accuracy but yeah it's good it's good if you people want to go over there graded. right oh my gosh I know. well because i picked i'm not too sure what robin did but i did have a mixture of fueling so i picked a day that i used all of precision fuel and hydration stuff so it was a bit of a cocktail generally some days were using say vela forte and a bit of active route too so yeah it was a bit of a mix so i appreciate that the evidence might have looked like a three out of five but people did ask me actually how did i fuel york marathon and i was on it every 30 minutes for a gel and i was using my goodness me it was the gel that the active root gel mix but i did before the run i had a ph 1500 i don't think i'm going to wander too far from that path in the future it served me it served me really well you like my photo i sent you of my uh my eldest coming off the football pitch being clapped up the football pitch just chugging out of his huge precision hydration bottle influencer <laughs> with my electrolytes in it hashtag influencer it was great it was i loved it i loved it all oh, great back on track thanks to all our Patreon partners and sponsors for supporting the Teen Shows podcast. You can find links for all our sponsors at www.tantrails.com or in the show notes. Week five. I love that. Week, <laughs> week five. In the Eddie Sutton house, things are all exactly the same. Week five. Did we do? Were the same, were they, Gary? Oh, no. Because what did we do? We recorded quite a bit last week and we recorded some interview. Anyway, I had... I had a really sore throat. I don't think I complained about it because I'm a hero like that, Gary, and I just get on with stuff. Trooper. Um, what a trooper. What a trooper. But I had these double days that I had. I wanted to get in before this week when I knew I was hardly going to be able to get any running in. But I was not good, Gary. I was so, I was so sick. I got proper... I got that sore throat and then I got proper cold, headache, couldn't sleep. On the Wednesday, with the day before my double day that I scheduled... I had the kids at home and it's like their sporting day and I just had to keep driving them to their sporting activities, coming home and then just going back to like lying back in bed and then going like, right, 20 minutes, got to get back. Oh my gosh, I felt terrible. But it was the two days on an ideal day, on an ideal week, I'd have shoved that like, right, let's move it like four or five days later. But I didn't have that option. And I didn't, I, my HRV didn't, it didn't tank. I was like, my resting heart rate was normal. My HRV was normal. I was oh, like, wow. how can this be? I'm so <laughs> ill. You just got to suck it up. <laughs> I did everything, Gary. I did two COVID tests. I took my temperature and I was oh, like, wow. <laughs> everything says you're absolutely fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I did have enough snot and my it's the throat that was killing me anyway nothing I could do I had to suck it up and get on with it the only thing at the first day so I did five and a bit hours um it was about 25 miles I think in the end to just over 2,000 meters of elevation probably a bit too much climbing but it actually it wasn't didn't feel that much climbing because it was like runnable but it just accumulates if you run that far out here. And I was with my friend and I wore my heart rate monitor because especially when I'm running with someone, I'm quite, always quite mindful that I don't want to slow them down. If you're doing lots of mine and they're like, they've got two runs a week and you're doing 10, um, they want to run and you're like, so I wore my yeah. heart rate monitor just to say, look, I'm going to go on my heart rate. And the minute it hits 140, we can walk going up a hill basically. Well, anyway, my heart rate was through the roof, 170 as Ooh. we were going up. And she was laughing because she's a friend that I do. I used to do the swift bike racing where she was like, Eddie, that's what your heart rate used to be when we were like max out. Oh my goodness It me. was really, really high, but I wasn't like, it was just... It just felt like, I just felt like I had to walk. It didn't feel 
it didn't, it just didn't feel like that. My heart, my poor boy was just fighting. If I did that, the old, I know it's a very accurate, but if I did that all 220 minus your age, that We'd would be 100. Yeah, yeah, 100. And then That's I wild. thought, well, maybe I'm picking up her heart rate strap and it's not picking up mine. Ah, uh, interesting. So we did like two hours together and then she left and I was like, now it's going to, now I'll see. Nope, still. Nope. So even like just <laughs> jogging on the flats where I'd normally be like 125, 130, it was like 145. Okay. It wasn't happening. Ooh, anyway, yeah. sucked it up, Gary. Fueling. I just was like, imagine you feel like this on the race. You just, you're okay. You got to do yeah. it. Um, so five hours did it. Um, no recovery then because that took me so long. It's five so hour then, threshold run. Awesome. Five <laughs> hour threshold run. And I came back in, I was like 40 minutes till I've got to do the school run. Oh my God. So quick shower, a, and you don't really feel, also I, I felt that I plowed in so much food. You're not, I wasn't like super hungry, yeah. but I knew I had to run again the next day. And that I did. I didn't feel any iller. So again, I had no <laughs> excuses. And then the next day I did, I was thinking I was going to do like four hours, but the re- the rain was Oh, so it was two jackets. I had two jackets on. It was so awful, the weather. It was so cold. And I thought, even Eddie, I think three hours is enough. Is that the so, same storm that we've had? Have you had that storm? Bab- Bab- it, wasn't it? Storm. Was it? it wasn't a storm. It wasn't windy. It was just, it's just been raining. Like someone just pouring a bucket of water over you constantly. So I did three hours. I felt that was plenty, um, all things considered. Got the fueling. I was pleased with the fueling, pleased with the kit. I mean, I felt tired, but I was fine. I actually averaged quicker running the second day than I did the first day. Awesome. So it was fine. Then, uh, and then I did another, the next day, two 45 minute recovery runs. And then the next day I did a like tempo-ish run. So I recovered, like also I was so relieved to feel better. You know, when you felt ill, it was so, I was like, oh my God. I felt, so I was lucky. I rolled the dice and I was lucky because that could have, you know, not if someone had said to you, should I run? Because I've got like this really sore throat and cold. Should I do these double, you know, 40 miles over two days? Oh, 100%. I'd say, no, 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 give it a rest. <laughs> what are you doing yourself? Yeah. And uh, uh, Adam look after kids and, you know, trying to do my job. No, 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 go. You go and do that, Eddie. Anyway, so I rolled the dice. Dear listeners, this is not a good idea, but I came out of it fine. Probably helped by the fueling as well, shoving in the calories. Um, so I better did have recovery runs on Saturday. And then Sunday went out for a... Bit of a, I, I like my Sundays to be like, I still try and do a bit of a session, but kind of build. Let's see how I feel. And I felt great. So off I went and put the hammer down a little bit for half this run. My favorite run, it's about, it's never the same, never the same. It's between eight and nine miles. And it depends how Garmin feels that day, whether we're going to go near a nine or okay. near an eight. <laughs> but you run up about 1,600 feet, 1,800 feet again, depending on how Garmin's feeling. And then you turn around, it's a big, like a lollipop, and you come down. So it's a bit of an effort running up. But then when you, then you have like four or five miles of beautiful, runnable trails and you feel like Courtney DeWalter running down amazingly. Coming down, it's a really popular hiking route to go up especially on a Sunday coming. So you feel like a rock star because you're running down it. It's rocky, but it's not really technical. So, and I know it so well. So I know all the like little bits can run down. I always feel like everyone's going, wow, she's so fast. (laughs) That's exactly what they're thinking. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, as I was running down, big group of hikers, uh, my little cycling shorts on because it's tempo run, got a little look good, feel good. A, what I had tied my, I'd gone out in a thermal long sleeve top, got too hot, taken it off, tied it around my waist. And I think a wasp had climbed up the top and gone into my shorts. Because oh. as I was coming down the hill, Courtney style, flying, what I think is flying, this wasp had got up into my butt cheek, where the, shall we say, the fold of the cheek oh, over the thigh goes? <laughs> I'm glad you I never showed me it now. <laughs> do you want to see? Um, YouTubers, do you want to see? Do you want to show? I shouldn't, I um, shouldn't laugh. <laughs> uh, anyway, it had got right up there and it went It went deep, Gary. I leapt through. Oh, my God. It felt like I'd been shot in the butt cheek. It's, I haven't been stung for a for a little while and it really hurts. The kids get stung all the time and I don't give them much sense. Anyway, I leapt, but all these walkers were there. So I had to like style it out. And I was like, 
smashing up my butt cheek <laughs> thinking, oh my God, it could still be in there. It could be in my pants and it's going to stick. Blah, blah, blah. Just tense, tense your butt cheeks, crush it. Body touch. And then, of course, then I got down to like just to, before I hit the road and then I had to like rummage in front of all these people to like go, where is it? And I could just feel the lump. Well, I look. <laughs> what, what a trooper. I, I ran all the way home. The first thing I did was like pull down my shorts, bend over. <laughs> Ring. It's like, what? Can you see it? Can you see it? It's like, stung me. And it's still a wasp now, little swine. Anyway, I don't ever remember being stung by a wasp or a bee. Well, your peach is probably not as peachy as mine or as large. Do you know what the kids said? They said, oh my God, that's going to make your butt look even bigger. I mean, no, it's counting your children, can't you? Give you a boost. Probably true. J Lo lives. <laughs> J Lo lives in Morgan. Anyway, so at the end, it was a good week, solid miles, and good double days. There's more double days to come, but it was the, my starting pack. My starting pack. I feel much more confident about that fueling. I just felt, I felt cleaner, Gary, because I felt like I could really control what was going in, and. And I had a couple of moments when I was like, especially on the second day when it was just like, we were so cold and we'd stop, we got our kit out of the bag and we put more kit and then had to start running again. And it was a real moment of like, this is total. Mm. And then my watch beeped and I was like, oh my God. But I was like, no, come on, come on. So it's a start. We've got a good start up a 10. Really pleased with that. I don't think I'm going to be able to go like for that length of time. I'm still slightly like, how do you fuel for 40, 50, 60? Like, it, it, like, and even though I've done it, I mean, I've done 100 and 125, I fueled that. Like, but I don't, but this is a bit different because I don't want to be stopping with you for hours having a meal. <laughs> I don't really want to stop at all. I want to get this done. We've got to get you home. <laughs> I think you have to plan for every occasion, don't you? There's, I, I've never done anything that long um, in one go, but... Yeah, there's definitely times on 100 milers where the food I thought I'd never want was the food that got me to the end. So, yeah, you have to... There's definitely going to have to be, I think there's going to have to be some sort of meal in there. Just I'm going to go, you're going to want something hot. You're going to want like chips or something. Chips. Um, chips. But I know, I mean, I can I have, have a better guy next to me when I go, God, can you find some chips? He's going to go, I have a really good stuff. <laughs> I'll have an app. <laughs> Chip. I can <laughs> <laughs> it's already on its way. Oh no, you bought pizza too. This is embarrassing. Oh. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> Don't worry about that, Eddie. No, no, Eddie, that's not for you. <laughs> yeah, leave that. <laughs> anyway, you've been you've been up. You're Adam. You couldn't record this podcast any earlier because you said I'm getting hench, Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I give that. Well, let's actually next week's conversation. So I'm not. I didn't go to the gym, but I did some work at home instead. But yeah, last week I'm a back. But anyway, I'm feeling loads better. My heart rate variability has been in the green all week. And it's backed up by, I actually feel pretty good too. I'm up and about, I think is the uh, is the phrase. But yeah, not much running again because I'm not physically started in training. I've looked at my pre, 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 pre marathon training plan. And I don't know about you actually, sometimes because most people do get a training plan from online or a book or something like that. And I looked at week one and I always think if you look at week one of your training plan and it scares you, you're not quite ready for week one yet. So if there's a workout in there, it's like, oh, wow, well, 10 times five minutes or something like that you think okay we'll read it in but luckily but my pre 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 marathon training plan is basically just 10 times a minute so that's super easy that is, i can I, I mean if you're coached by me you will recognize that that is my I, it's my starting pack or it's also just such a great session for someone busy getting back into it go do you do i do 10 by one minute like i do up and under so one minute hard and then i keep the Keep the float quite steady. Oh, sometimes. it just could be a walk or jog until I get oh, my heart rate down. Is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but it's a great session that you can. You can do like all out one minute recovery, or if you're fit, you're just like, it's just that you can go like high. Well, this, is better. this is just at five, five K pace. That's in this training plan. I'd yeah, give the people credit. Fast. But oh goodness me, yeah. But I'd, I'd give them credit, but I just really I can't remember where I found it. But um, so yeah, it was just um ten times one minute at five k pace, which does feel fast. I don't think I could actually do a five k at that pace. But then the you next can. session is <laughs> you can, whenever you go. Is that your ten k pace? Can you really hold it? Or can you really hold that your tempo pace for an hour? Yeah, 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 sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> but what's the next one? It's only, say, on paper, it's like 10 minutes at 5K pace. So my reaction, my gut reaction is to stick some more on top of that. No. Do I know, but these, yeah, you do can't, proper. Because the hard has to be so hard. You have to get yeah. your head around that a bit now, don't you? But sticking sticking some more on top of it is not the way to... More isn't more. Always. More isn't more <laughs> all the time. That, all the time, that's it. Um, What else? The long run. So, yeah, your five-hour long runs are making me wince, actually. I think two hours is my long run at the weekend and oh, i sorry, so, do we cover the same distance though <laughs> maybe, maybe anyway i've got way ahead of myself talking about sorry, what's coming sorry. up but yeah not loads of running but i did finally get my innovate jacket review out and it's went down pretty well over on uh, youtube about ten thousand views in a week <gasps> uh, do you know why that is gary it's not ten thousand. sorry it's about 800 <laughs> which is still really good still really good for us <laughs> You don't even leave me. <laughs> That'd be like a viral video of 10th for us anyway. <laughs> you know why it is though? The 800, because I had a little sneaky look. You look, you look oh, yeah. good. You look good. Oh. You've done these like pictures with your hands. <laughs> Please. <laughs> It's really awkward. Me, uh, I'm down the lines, the old real lines with George. You and, like, uh... <laughs> but you've also put your wedding ring quite prominently in a lot of them to go. I know I'm. I know I'm hard. <laughs> 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 I don't yeah. know where to go from that. He's dying now. He's dying now. But go and everyone go and look at the pictures. You'll know. You'll, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> but I'm super pleased. You know, YouTube is judge and jury if your video if your video does what youtube wanted to do it will keep promoting your video for us so for us 800 I'm, views in a week did you like the is, jacket oh my goodness me yeah. super 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 pleased with the jacket would i wear it because i think i mentioned um bit hench around the old pecs these days i <laughs> just look at the pictures it's draining that's it <laughs> so yeah i wish i'd sized up so anybody who is thinking about buying this jacket Try it on if possible because I am an extra small in other innovate bits of kit. Uh, but this was a bit snug. Also, this is loads of just uh, now my life is product review tester. I, I don't know if you received them, but I received the new balance fuel cell it super can be comp. A, I just presumed you take all the product and I never get. I never. I don't know. I did say. I did say. Send some to Eddie. <laughs> Even if it's female, you'll probably try it on. It's all mine. <laughs> it's all mine. Oh, Eddie, did you not get that? Oh, oh. Oh. Lisa's Lisa's running around in some <laughs> in some brand new New Balance. Um. So hopefully get that ready for Sunday, Monday, because I'm doing a long run. I've done lots of running in it in these shoes and. Oh. Uh, I'm not going to give any spoilers, but I do feel I need to do a long run in them to give it a proper proper test. So that will be coming. Also, last but not least, I've got some Ultra Lawn Peak 7, which I will be testing. It's not particularly a new shoe, that one, but I had the Ultra Lawn Peak 6. And my goodness me, Dragon's Back Race, I was praying for that shoe when my little sausage feet started to swell uh day four and five so i'm super curious how the seven stacks up and then maybe next year or whenever it comes out we'll get to review the eight too so loads and loads of my goodness me anybody who does it people might think oh it's so wonderful gary's getting loads of uh stuff sent to him. the amount of time it takes to do a review it's uh epic yeah so yeah fill your boots if you want to do a youtube review go for it and uh, just watch 10 hours of your life vanish it's uh it's quite spectacular what else have i been up to but yeah same same again as really running easy miles some strides some strength and conditioning at home i did watch after your um recommendation at home with the furies <laughs> did i recommend that oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Quality highbrow entertainment, I thought. It was a tricky I, I, <laughs> I did enjoy it actually, but then I I did, and then at the end when they were touching on him, his depression really from when he transitioned from boxing to non-boxing life, I didn't enjoy watching him struggle. Uh, I'm not too sure what the rest of the series how that pans out, but uh, yeah. My goodness me, episode one, when his wife sends his son off to school, 
with the wrong short, I just couldn't stop laughing. My goodness me, I just chuckled, chuckled and chuckled and chuckled. That was hilarious. I, yeah, I can't really good. Say anything that isn't, I, I just just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy watching <laughs> how other people live. It's incredible. It's uh, mad though how I'm not too sure if like Netflix <clears throat> listens in, but. After the conversation, and you mentioned At Home with the Furies, and the next thing was Netflix was recommending At Home with the Furies. But yeah, really enjoyed it. And that was my week. Not a lot of, no quality, but lots and lots of uh, running around with the GoPro, jumping over cameras, jumping in puddles, and uh, torturing poor Rex. My goodness me, that dog is uh, tortured when he comes backwards and forwards. It's crazy. But yeah, that's my week. This week's Brew with the Coaches question is from Paul Fortune. Oh, actually, it's not from Paul oh. Fortune. Oh, it's Paul Fortune is a friend of mine, but <laughs> and we discussed it. But I take credit for this question. Oh, it's from you. It's from you. It's from Gary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's from Gary. This week's brew with the coaches. It's from Gary. <laughs> I'm five foot six, nine stone, but I've drained to six foot four and 15 stone. We both read the same info, you know, 60 to 90 grams of carb per hour during exercise. And that works well for me. But could Paul, who's my friend and he's a Patreon, could he go up to something like 150 grams of carb per hour? Or is there a limit on how much the body can turn into energy regardless of height? Yeah, if I do say so myself, it's a fascinating question. Uh, who wants to go first? Yes, yeah, so the 60 to 90 grams of carbs is sort of like quite a popular uh, amount that people have settled on. And it comes down to sort of biochemically, how much can we intake from our gut whilst we're exercising? There's two transporters that input sugar into our systems to allow us to use it for energy. So you've got glucose and fructose. And those are the two subunits that make up sugar, essentially. We can probably do a two to one ratio on that. So more two to one glucose to fructose. So you can Im import more glucose than fructose. So it's kind of settled out that people end up using combination of, of sugars to achieve that. It doesn't necessarily fit that the bigger you are, the more you can transport, though. That's down to sort of cellular level biology, which is quite similar for all of us. Um, but your caloric demand, so how many calories you need, is bigger if you are bigger, okay? So the amount of sugar you can import into your system to use is not the same as sort of overall calories that you need just to sort of maintain your metabolism, just at rest, for example. Um, your basal metabolic rate, how much you just use when you're resting, is much bigger if you are a bigger individual. Some studies have shown we can probably go above that 60 to 90. 120 grams particularly has been studied, but 150 Definitely, I think you would start to run into issues with how that affects your gastro gastrointestinal system because that's how we have to absorb it. And a lot of the studies are looking at things, you know, how much sugar can we use is different to how much we can actually take in once we're under stress of exercising because, as we know, blood gets diverted to where it's needed when we're exercising. Uh, so that goes to our muscles and that hinders our digestion and therefore it hinders the transport and uptake of those molecules from our gut. So just because he's bigger, he would still struggle to get anywhere near 150 grams. And there's quite a lot of studies to show when you actually analyse what people have eaten at the end of an ultra, they're probably more down 30 to 50 really, um, and around about 50 is probably what most people hit just because of all those other demands that are on our bodies and how palatable the food becomes as you go further into a race. So there's the scientific theory of how much you could technically get through your gut. And then there's the reality of what happens during an ultra event, which stops us from being able to hit that. You covered everything. Trish, do you have anything to add? I would probably just say, like we were talking about um, what's interesting in terms of the difference between male and female specifically. And the, like a good example of that recently is Camille Herriton, who um, just won Spartathlon. So I would say if you, you know, you know, looking at size is, is um, presents differences as well, but also in terms of the male, female piece, that's another thing to look at as well. You know, Camille has just recently pushed out something in regards to her carbohydrate intake. Uh, and now I would have thought that she'd have, be she'd be taking a lot higher carbohydrate than 
than she was, but actually it turns out, I think it was something like maybe six, I want to say 60 grams. And actually, if you look at um, a lot of elite runners, actually they're pushing higher and higher and higher uh, a lot of the time. So, you know, in terms of your fat utilization, that's going to be different person on person. I would always just say with carbohydrate intake, it's so individual. You've got to, you've got to practice it and build on that to find the optimum amount for you and your body and what's going to work for you. So I would always test it yourself as opposed to doing what you think you should be doing based on a formula or science. But they're good indicators, good parameters to work through. And a big part of it is fitness as well, is the fitter you are, the more well-trained you are, then the lower um, both your perceived exertion and your actual exertion when you're running these ultras is going to be, then your your gut is less likely to be in distress because you're less likely to be running as to that hard. So fitness comes into a lot, a lot of this as well as to how much carbs that you can then absorb. But a big thing is, you know, a lot of elite athletes are pushing out, you know, 90, this, I had 90 an hour, I had 120 an hour. But then you look and see who they're sponsored by and yeah. how much of this is like, so that you can feel like, oh, I've got to eat more, I've got to eat more in order to be like Tom Evans or Gary Thwaites you know but really i think really actually what can you eat the biggest thing is to keep it super simple what can you eat that you can then carry on comfortably running without feeling sick or being sick and just repeat repeat again and i think almost as well more importantly look at what you want to eat because if you can be all fancy as you want with the gels and uh, grams and stuff. But if you don't want to eat it and you don't eat it, that's when we sort of fall apart. So really working out, having lots of different options, being flexible in your feeding plan, listening to your body and just keeping the drip feeding in. One of the biggest things is that Garmin, and I expect all the other watches have as well, is a little thing you can turn on that tells you to eat and drink. I think it literally shouts at you, eat, drink, eat. (laughs) <laughs> eat um, so if you're out training it's not on a race I wouldn't want it on a race because I think it would start confusing me at like two o'clock in the morning eat I'd be like what who who is that um but for training I think it's a really good idea do you can set the parameters differently so you can try every 20 minutes every 30 minutes what works for you and it will keep reminding you because it's too easy when we when we get on a long run especially for buddies and we're chatting then it's too easy to like go well how did what did I actually eat so actually putting some thought into when you're going to eat and um what you're going to eat is the most important thing rather than getting hung up on grams of carbs and that's sort of like the finer detail isn't it at the end of the day like doing the work training first training the gut and then sort of almost coming back to it and seeing how many carbs you have an answer doing it in reverse does that make sense but don't over, yeah but don't overlook to like you said there don't overlook eating on your training runs the amount of times i'll go out with friends i'm not going to throw anybody under a bus but then maybe be <laughs> flagging behind at some point of running up when did you eat last oh yeah i've had half a flapjack in three hours oh so many yeah. times with mates i've been like You've got to eat because you're getting really annoying now. People start getting <laughs> spanky. Specificity as well of eating. So if you're going on a training run, what pace are you running at? And are you going to, you know, are you going to be, are you practicing fueling for race pace? That's that's a key thing. If, you, if it's a short race, I say short race like marathon, <laughs> but if it, <laughs> if it's a shorter shorter distance, you're going to probably be going at a higher intensity. Whereas you're you're doing a hundred miler, um, that's going to be generally lower intensity, and your gut will respond differently to the to what you're putting into it, and you'll probably need a different type of food at certain points. A good tip I often say is if you can't fuel, you're going too fast, basically. Whatever distance, what unless yeah. it's like a 5K because only Gary needs a gel during a 5K. <laughs> but basically, if you, can't, if you can't fuel the pace you're running at, even if that's like half marathon and you're chucking a gel down and you're slightly choking on it and half it's coming out, that's perfect. That's great half marathon. But, but for the longer stuff as well, if you can't actually get the stuff out of your pack because you're running too fast and you can't chew and you can't swallow then that's a good sign to you. Be realistic with yourself. Okay, I need to slow down in order to fuel as well. So I would say to your buddy, he just needs to make sure on those race days, he's got those calories going in. If you, if Gary has one sandwich, Paul has two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I hope that helped. You know, Paul, six foot four, 15 stone. There's not the big much guy. fat on Paul. What oh, a yeah, he's he's, he's pretty hench. So yeah, yeah. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> is, he, Another... is he quite stacked or is he like, yeah, yeah. all oh, right, well, Trish, yeah. all right. We can send you a picture. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He is hench. There's not much fat on Paul. Big, 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 strong guy. I'm curious, actually. Did you see with uh, Camille Heron? I know she likes alcohol sometimes when she oh, runs. Oh, Uzu. Yeah, she's yeah. been like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that That's... stuff makes me feel sick whenever they bring, you know, they bring it round at the end of a meal and they're like, you I must I couldn't, it. I couldn't have one of those sober. Never mind. Like, you know, I got miles triggered. It reminded me of an all-inclusive holiday I had in Rhodes once. I'm like, no. Oh, that's <laughs> no a whole other podcast, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. What a, what a woman. This week, we chat with Danielle Ledbury. She has written and photographed the most beautiful book called Why We Run, Tales of Fell and Trail Running in the Lake District. This is, uh, oh, it's very emotional, isn't it, actually? Stories of all sorts of people, some people that you will recognize, some people that you won't know, and um, beautiful, beautiful photos, all of which she's taken herself. I won't say any more because she explains beautifully how she wrote the book. Here's our chat with Danielle. This week, we are delighted to welcome an author. We are we are upgrading the podcast this week. Danielle Ledbury to the podcast. She has written the most beautiful book, Why We Run, Tales of Fell and Trail Running in the Lake Districts. It's absolute a treat to the to all the senses, if a book can be that, with the most beautiful stories, plus pictures, plus maps. It's everything if you even if you're intimately intimate knowledge of the Lake District um you could still uh learn something learn something from both the pictures and these people absolutely loved reading the book so welcome to the show Danielle we start as we always do where are you what's the view from your window and have you been for a run today Hello, thank you so much for having me on and that lovely introduction. <laughs> um, least I could do. I am in Greystoke, which is in North Lakes um, in the Lake District. The view from my window is, yeah, my little village, the little coldy sack of Greystoke. I can sort of just about see the little Greystoke um, castle and forest. Have I been for, oh yes, I did. I got out for a run this morning, uh, first thing <laughs> before my husband was leaving for work. I was like, can you have the baby for like 30 minutes? Because <laughs> <laughs> It's an excellent slot when you've got a young baby that like husband getting ready to go to work you know what are you doing you're in a cup of tea you like you can look after a baby at the same time and then it sets you up for the day doesn't it if you've got out for a run even if you're tired you just feel better don't you was it head to watch for you this morning danielle it was just about yeah it was Ooh. i think those like i really love the, the dawn and dusk they're kind of my favorite times to be out anyway with the lights changing around you <laughs> And what's it like when you step out of your door? Are you straight like onto the trails? Yeah, so I live um, just on the outskirts of the National Park, really. Um, so, yeah, I don't have like the the hills directly on my doorstep. They're, they're only a short drive, but they're still a little drive away. So directly out my door is kind of roads and there's like just footpaths through fields um, and things like that. Do you have a dog that you run with or is it a solitary? I don't have a dog. No, no. Yet. Not yet. There's wistfulness <laughs> <to> arise. <today. laughs> and what does a typical like running week look like for you? Um, are you sort of back into running post post baby now like pretty much as you were before? Definitely not as I was before. Um, I think before time was a bit um, endless. <laughs> so I just spent most of my free time just out in the hills. Um, so now I think I'm just kind of, I feel like I'm just getting back into the swing of things really. Absolutely. I was kind of focusing on the book for a while and it just took me a lot longer than I thought, which is just how it was. Have you done a race or so since you um since you had your baby though, haven't you? Which went quite well. I did a bit of Insta light Instagram oh. <laughs> I did the Scarfell um Sky Race, um, which I basically I had an entry to that last year, but I found out I was pregnant. So I asked if I could defer it. And um, Charlie, the organizer was just like, yeah, sure. Sounds great. Really look forward to seeing you next year. And I just think that's so fantastic. I know that's not the same for every kind of race. So I was kind of trying to get ready for it. And I definitely, I think if I hadn't already had it booked in and he hadn't been so nice, and yeah, it was great fun, but it was so hot. <laughs> it was really hot. The first half of it, 
the first like 20k i was thinking this is amazing this is great all that walking in the hills carrying a baby this is this <laughs> like, I'm one of those people i've come back stronger yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> i was like this is great and then i think you like the second half you drop down checkpoint and then you go back up into the hills again and my and my legs just started cramping out and i think it's just the heat and probably yeah i probably definitely not as fit as I used to be so <laughs> but um so then just sat down for a while ate some loads of salty peanuts <laughs> waited okay. for it to go and then um continued on do you have a favorite part of the lakes ah yes um I mean yeah Blencathra <laughs> it's oh. just it's just stunning oh no Borodale oh I forgot about Borodale <laughs> How could you forget about Borodale? How could I forget about Borodale? <laughs> oh, it's, I, how do I choose between the two? Like, I mean, um, Blencathra, you've got, like, you've got rock, you've got, like, the views, you've got the sunset from there. It's just absolutely stunning. It's also this, like, it's just this epic, you can see it from everywhere, and it's so distinctive. Yeah. That, um, and you just know that you can get up and down it, and it's just quite a wow factor mountain, I think. Um, well, hill fell. And then um, Borodale because uh, there's just so much tree cover in Borrowdale. And that's beautiful. You just feel kind of in such a wild place in Borrowdale. Quite often, like if you if you go there, like in a weekday or something like that, or in spring, or it's just so quiet. It's just absolutely stunning. I think you've got such a variety of landscape in Borrowdale, which is quite... I think that's why I like Blencathra too. If you go off the back of Blencathra, yeah. you could probably see nobody all day well, apart from maybe people who were wrecking or attempting a bob graham round or something like that but yeah i absolutely love glenn Cathra. okay we'll move it on a bit a bit about you and your journey to becoming an author that is i'm so fascinated to, to know what um motivates somebody to actually produce a book so i guess i just i've always absolutely loved books like i love i'm always drawn to bookshops and books and i think it's just the storytelling i love storytelling which i suppose you guys probably would relate to that in a sense like you're interested in people's stories i can just get lost in them so books have always kind of drawn me in in that way um and it's just something I've always kind of had on my little life tick list of things I would just love to do. Um, I honestly didn't even really think it would ever really happen. But <laughs> once you just kind of started, you just kept going, kept going and ticking along. And oh, my mum. Do, do you go with the idea? What's the process? Do you go with the idea to a publisher? So yes. Yeah. So once I'd started the project and, um, and I kind of, said from the outset that I'd really love it to be a book at the end um and at that point I didn't know whether that meant just me making something or blurb or like an actual published book that would have been that was like my kind of what I'd love to have gone for and achieved but I was definitely going to make it into some form of book but yeah once it was the project was kind of running and I had a bit of a body of work I then started to apply to publishers um and I applied to a lot of publishers <laughs> loads yeah i got loads of no's um i got a lot of people saying that they they love the photography they really love the stories but they just didn't think it was commercial enough basically and that was the same the same story that i got quite often i nearly gave up loads but my mum kept saying to me she was like my biggest cheerleader she kept being like don't give up keep trying just keep trying she's like people apply to thousands of publishers yeah. 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 she's like it's like just keep going <laughs> so and then she'd always check in on me and ask how it was. So I suppose her like just being like, no, don't worry, it's fine. No, you'll find the right one. <laughs> Mums are always right. They're always <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And then I was chatting to, um, I was doing some volunteer work at a gallery um, in the lakes. And the lady I was working with there, I was telling her about the project and she just said, I absolutely love it. And then she said, uh, that she knew a local publisher called Dave and she gave me his email address and she was like, you should ask him for a coffee. Um, <laughs> and that's what I did. I then just emailed him saying, oh, I've been given your contact by and like, please will you um, meet me for a tea? I'll buy you tea or coffee. And just <laughs> hit me out basically. <laughs> um, and yeah, he met me and I really think meeting in person mm. um, and chatting to him. And also I think that he 
like he was the he was the right type of publisher for the project. Um, so he was based in the lakes. He and he said, uh, I really like it. I think photography is great. The stories are great. The concepts great. Um, but if we're going to make it work, then uh, I'm a lakes based publisher. So it needs to be about the lakes. And I was just like, well, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> like, works for me. <laughs> so. Um, so then I suppose the focus of the project, because originally it was just why do people run really okay. good? Yeah. Um, and then we focused it down onto like fell and trail running in the Lake District. Yeah. Because I think to start with, I had conversations with like road runners in different places and um, and all sorts. Uh, so then we basically just focused it down into what would work with him. But also it really worked for what I was doing anyway. But also I think Dave's a bit savvy because once this is the number one times bestseller, we can do why do people run in Scotland? And we can do a series <laughs> of the world. <laughs> Next editions. <laughs> Next editions. It's just the start. You said you you love telling stories. Our favorite part of the podcast quite often is Tales from the Trails. It's an opportunity for us to kind of shine the light on other people uh yeah what motivated you to share other people's stories well i think um to start with i to honestly to start with i just thought this would make quite an interesting photography project and i'd really like to photograph people um like challenge myself in because i'd done a lot of i'd done a lot of like landscape photography and things like that before but i thought i really wanted to do a project that I, was something I hadn't really done before and challenged myself. So that's why I wanted to focus on people. And I like the storytelling side of things. And then I basically asked, um, I had a couple of friends come and visit um, and I said, I've got this idea. Do you fancy being guinea pigs for me? And um, I'll, we'll go out on a little run and we can chat about running and I'll interview and take a few pictures. And when we were out and we were doing it and we were running, I told them like what we might talk about. I said, oh, I think I'm going to ask you this and this. And then we went for the run and then we stopped on the hill. And I think it just became really apparent that it really, really worked. It was that process of being out in like really immersed in that experience and while they were running they said to me that they thought about why it is to them that they do like running they were like oh i'm really actually thinking about it and then when we stopped and we talked and i photographed them um, and i thought oh, i'm just going to take some really interesting photos but what they came out and said to me uh, was just really powerful and i guess it made me think oh that's really like what people are saying is really interesting. From there, I put out a post on Instagram, um, on just my personal Instagram, and sort of said, I'd really like to see this project about why people run. Would anybody be interested in being interviewed and photographed? And George Foster replied saying, hi, yes, I'm up for that. <laughs> like nice start. Amazing runner <laughs> in the late <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> So... And I just thought, oh, blimey, like now I've, I've gone from photographing my friends to photographing George Foster <laughs> straight away. George, you want to go for a run? Or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, slow down, George. <laughs> I know, he did. He, he, he was like, I'm going to wear, it was like October or November. And he said, I'm going to wear lots of layers if that's right. I'm like, yeah, that's totally fine. Cause... <laughs> so was that the same format you followed through for all of the runners? Did you go for a run and then chat about uh, why, why they run? Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that test, um, I, I basically, when we first went out with my friends, I said, oh, let's do a run. I kind of thought, oh, we'll run to a nice location. That's kind of why we're running to get out there. But it became really apparent that the run was really important as part of the whole interview process. How did you notice you were running? Did you know, did you just record people? <laughs> I, um, I just use voice notes, voice memos on my phone and then, um, and then transcribed it afterwards. Because I'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> it's a great idea because quite often the conversations I have out on the trails yeah. are a lot different than maybe what I'd have face-to-face -face with somebody. Yeah, fascinating. Okay, I've got to ask it. Why... Why do you run? Why do I run? <laughs> I've just said it's not probably not the best way to deliver this question, but yeah. <laughs> um, I think for me, there was... Um, so I did interview myself at one point. Well, I, I got my husband to interview me because we were in one of the lockdowns and I thought, oh, I may as well. Yeah, what came out of that was, I think I've got two reasons. One is definitely just about, about personal challenge and working out what you're capable of or at least stretching my perception of what i think i'm capable of i think running has been one of the key things that has done that in my life and 
I think that's really quite empowering. <laughs> and then the other one is just to being completely immersed in nature. Um, yeah. I just, uh, there's just something really grounding and really like beautiful about it. And running through a landscape, you just, you get to really feel it and see it so much more of it. Um, yeah. Like, was that a common thread that came out with a lot of the runners that you talked to was that actually it wasn't about the actual running as such, but the being out, being in touch, the ground beneath your feet, you know, it's, it's, that's the importance, isn't it? Rather than the stats. It, yeah, definitely. Like a lot of it that came out, there was a huge amount that came out. And um, there was a few kind of common threads that people would talk about quite a lot. One was, um, yeah, the landscape and being out in it and how it can really make, um, put life into perspective. Mm -hmm. That came up quite a lot. Like when you realize how small you are in a landscape, it can help put all of your problems into perspective in a sense. Um, yeah. And that other, that process of movement and allowing your mind to just process things and, um, yeah, that you always come back and everything's a little bit more processed. <laughs> yeah. Do you think you can have the same, the same reaction if you'd interviewed like people, road runners, for instance, like, do you think the, the stories would be quite it different? It would be really different. I think it would be quite, yeah. I do think it would be different because, yeah, the impact of the landscape did definitely come out quite a lot. Because they're running in the most dramatic, the most one, one, there's, there's no judging here, one of the most beautiful places in England as well. And so that, that backdrop that you've got for every single, that's going to impact on every single person's story, isn't it? That's what's going to have got them out there in the first place, isn't it? It's that the, the one to be out in the fells, out in the weather, out in the nature. Yeah, that I love that. I part. don't think you get patience. I, I find... I have a lot of patience when I'm running. It's going to take me X amount of time to do something, and I've just got to accept that. Yeah, roadrunner, maybe wouldn't be uh, coming out from that from that angle. I'll just have to interview a roadrunner to find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when you put when you put the shout out to like um, people, you know, did you have a sort of like number in mind of people that you needed to have? It had the, had the, had you been like had the pub Dave? We we'll call him Dave. We know his name, publisher. Um, sort of said this is a sort of number. How did you sort of like put that all together? And um, did you have too many people, too little people? I had way too many people. Yeah. Um. So there is I, a sequel. There is a sequel there. There could there could definitely be a sequel. Like there's just there's so many amazing stories. And the more so once I interviewed George, it then kind of just um it just kind of snowballed because. Basically, he said, this is great. You should speak to so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. They've got really interesting stories. And then I spoke to those, and then he put me in touch with those people. They would then put me in touch with someone else. And everybody I spoke to recommended more people with interesting stories. But then I also wanted to open it up because a bit that was really important to me was I wanted to show the whole range of people and range mm -hmm. of stories. So I wanted to... Um, show like the athletes, but I also wanted to show, give the opportunity and a platform to a voice to a complete nobody effectively that might have a really interesting story to tell. A lady who was living in Thrailkeld at the time called Katie, um, we ended up linking up and she is really good with words and wanted to be helpful, wanted to help with the project. So she helped me build a website and she set up like a, um, a submission form um so then we basically had a submission form and an instagram account and we would just do call outs and then people would submit themselves to it and then we would look down through originally i was trying to into everybody i was just like yep the more the merrier i'm gonna find out everybody because quite often like I would, I would get the runner to choose their location. So if they chose the location and a run, then and when we were out, it meant something to them. So when they were talking about their running in the location, it meant something to them. Like this, their stories were just, it all just flowed a bit more. Like they would be like, oh, this happened there. And like that became kind of important as well. So yeah, I would see where the location, I would see where they, um, and roughly who they were and what kind of, like they would sort of say a little bit about them. And I was trying to interview everybody. And like you say, with a number, originally I had a number 40 in my mind. I don't really know why. I just thought that was- I do the same. I pick random numbers and I feel- <laughs> 
that's what I should be. I just thought that sounds like a big body of work. Like that all sounds like a book amount of work. But actually we, so originally Dave then, um, so further down the line, I think actually, I think I interviewed 36 people in the end. Um, and then we were at a point where I was also, because I then found out I was pregnant, I then was trying to interview <laughs> loads of people because i was thinking oh, it's going to be so much harder to do any any work oh well yeah <laughs> once baba's here so i was then um i was then just working really hard trying to work in full time and then interviewing at the weekends and typing things up at night yeah so we ended up he then because of page numbers and because we then decided to put the maps in there which mm. but i love the maps i, I love really needed to have that we ended up only being able to have 28 in there. So I had to kind of reduce down um, a little bit, which was really hard. That's super tough. But I think you need like you need the photographs, the maps. It really helps complete the story and you can visualise. And things you can resonate with, connect with. Uh, there's people like, say, Bob Gray around, Lakeland 50, uh, Lakeland 100. Yeah. Yeah. And to have the map, it really does help join, join the dots. Mm. I've got a story that I particularly connected with it. I don't want to say it's my favourite story, but yeah, I had a kind of connection with it. What, what about yourself? Oh, it's really difficult. I think um, one of my favourite stories was Chloe, um, Chloe's story. And that's because she was actually a friend of mine um, that I met through climbing because I climbed before I started uh, running in the fells up here. So I knew her from climbing. And when I was talking to her about this project, she sort of said to me, oh, would really like to be in it i think i've got a story you might find quite interesting and i sort of thought okay and then we went out and i did her interview and it was just the most powerful story of like determination and positivity and giving things a go and connection to the lands like the lake district so i'm sure when people read the book they will um they will find out about chloe's story which i don't want to get too much away but i suppose so she she had a sudden virus that she lost the use of her legs and it was a complete wake up and changing point for her and her life after that it, she was on a mission to reconnect herself to the outdoors and the fells and i had no idea she was a friend of mine and i had no idea that that had even happened in her life because it happened a long time before I'd even met her. So I think that was one of my favourites because you never know what someone's been through. I know I can see I can see her picture in uh, my mind of uh, of that story as well. Yes, I did like that one. Gary, what was your favourite one? Well, I've always got a soft spot for Zuki, but I've had a lot of Zuki oh. time lately. So <laughs> <laughs> we shared a moment on Crib Gox <laughs> and a bit of camp life together. But yeah, I was inspired you know, by Julie Carter again. She was inspired, sorry, by the, the Great North Run. So I've got a lot of connection with that event. And, you know, reading her story, not an easy childhood. But then later in life, again, we can't be that uh, dissimilar in age. She was doing the extended Bob Graham around the 55 and 55. And I just I just think it's it's awesome that people are still out there. You know, maybe not chasing PBs or, or sub three hour marathons, whatever, but there's always a challenge. And yeah, anyone who's around my age and still going out there and seeking challenges and adventure I find it really inspiring eddie well i was gonna say katie carl stapleton because she's my good friend and i i known her pre pre baby and then we sort of uh and she came to stay with me i think just before she had she got pregnant and she saw me with three kids and she was always like oh my god eddie. and then she, so i love i love reading her story and her connection um with taking the baby on the wayne rights and walking when she's pregnant and then coming back into running and her story of that but but I think my favourite is Katie Milburn, whose partner died during a fell race. And, and then she found a list of the races that he wanted to do and she set out doing them. I love the story. Of course, as soon as I started reading that, I was like, oh my God. But I love the pit. You obviously caught her on this most incredible winter's day. I love the, I love the picture of her as well, where she looks, she looks tough. The, one of the most... Uh, sometimes you can go out in the lakes and the weather and the scenery is just absolutely like um something magical <laughs> it doesn't feel real and that was definitely one of those days it was so cold <laughs> it was absolutely freezing <laughs> I, I couldn't i couldn't feel my fingers i was trying to take the photos and i was like can't even feel my fingers but it's so amazing we are not leaving i think she she quite sums up as well because she's quite this small figure um and you wouldn't know like 
everybody and we meet them on the podcast as well and you would just pass them in Tesco's buying some milk and you wouldn't know their story and then you, they come out with the, like this most amazing this story that makes you feel and you must have had that so many times on the fouls running with people make you feel like so inferior and so like wow like you've overcome so much and you've you've achieved so much and look at you and so yeah that was I just thought that was she was amazing but there's lots of little vignettes like that in all the stories isn't there um that people have found found themselves on the fells it's a fascinating book and it's it's stunning too and it, there's amazing stories throughout but there's also some you know serious titans of the uh, fell running world there too everyone's sharing their story so who took the pictures did you take the pictures or did you have a photographer or a mixture no they're all all the photographs are my my own <laughs> yeah oh my goodness me super talented what for, for the camera no, what what did you take the pictures on don't say your phone no <laughs> i didn't didn't do an iphone <laughs> no i used a, a nikon um z6 <laughs> so i went for gone for like the mirrorless setup um which yeah yeah and i did yeah i carried all of my gear my lenses um, and I was just really specific about which lenses I liked and <laughs> didn't take everything because I had to run with it all so book is published it's amazing it's beautiful I haven't had a ha- I haven't had a copy in my hands we've just had the pdf but I imagine that it's even more beautiful when you can actually spend the time flicking through I like a proper book flicking through the pages who do you see buying the book reading the book when you were sort of producing it did you have sort of an image in your eye of the sort of person that was going to pick it up in a bookshop Probably yourself would pick it up in the bookshop. Yeah, probably, probably myself. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, we're, the book is currently with all the printers, so we're waiting for all of the physical copies to come back to us, um, which will be very soon. I cannot wait <laughs> to see it yeah, in the physical reel. My main hope for this book is that it is a book of inspiration, and I think I've tried to include stories from all different types of people and different types of runners so that there could be something that would relate to a really, really vast range of people and runners. I think anybody that already runs in the fells and the trails that has a love for it, I think will love this book because it will remind them of experiences that they have as well. But also anybody that I think has an aspiration to run in the trails or fells, I think hearing some of these stories and realizing perhaps the humble beginnings that some people have come from or how powerful running might be to someone in need or how that it might essentially inspire people that have an aspiration to run in the trails of fells as well. Will it be at sort of um, your sort of local bookshops around like pop to Ambleside on your holiday is that um how does that I don't know I understand. yeah that was my question actually how does it work how do you go I know a little bit about the toy industry and we'd have toy fairs and then uh they're not even there anymore but say Toys R Us would go okay we'll have we'll have 10,000 action men uh how do you gauge how many books you print um so that's kind of down to Dave the publisher I'm really quite uh, new to all of that sort of thing <laughs> so uh, um but he's really experienced in it well and he's got really good connections with all of the local bookshops in the lakes so it will be in yeah most of the local bookshops in the lakes he's got quite good connections with all of them already um and then i think some waterstones locally it might be in as well it's online as well on inspired by lakeland com and i'm also going to be at kendall mountain festival where i'll be doing book signings as well in the running session we added Adidas at the next running session. Oh, there'll be lots of people listening that they'll get to see it. They'll get to see the book. And uh, when is it? When is it released? I've got a trip to the lakes. Maybe I've got a few quid burning a hole in my pocket. I can have a little uh, stroll down Keswick High Street. Ah, yeah. So it's going to be um, released in November. Yes. Or oh, you might just Perfect. catch. You might catch it on the front. Perfect timing. <laughs> yeah, front of that window shop new book. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they've got a cool bookshop in Keswick. Uh, oh my goodness, I hope it's still there. But yeah, I've been in there quite a few times, so I will be making making. You know what? I've noticed there's a lovely bookshop in London when we go whenever we go back, and I take the kids, and they're allowed to choose a book each, which is just I just love. And I have started buying books for my grandchildren already. Is that terrible? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> because because re- like reading to the kids, they they don't I don't read to them anymore. I mourn that fact that they all read them read to themselves very occasionally. I'll read. Read a book, 
But I loved that bedtime process of like, choose you, but the same, oh my God, the same three kids have I read the pirate ship, <laughs> Eddie's lost bear, the everyday bear. Oh my God. Have I read those books? But, and, and at the time I was like, oh my God, the day when I don't have to read the two or three, three books, no, just two or just one tonight. But I'm already mourning that like, so when we go in the book and I could spend hours looking through all the beautiful books of, um, uh, other, that you can buy. But I've also now like gone, oh, I'm going to buy those as new copies so when I have grandchildren gosh <laughs> heaven forbid uh, I'll be able to read that so gosh it'd be so exciting seeing your book in a real life bookshop and I expect lots of people listening will be at Ke- Kendall Mountain Festival so we will aim to get the podcast up before there to start start your publicity um <laughs> <laughs> your heavy publicity schedule but in what gosh you're so lucky what a beautiful book um I I you can and it's a, such a lovely book that you can dip in and out which is the sort of book that I love as well that every time you pick it up you're like oh I didn't see that little bit before or read it again and again um gosh and so much hard work it's beautiful and also you can you can, re- you can go back and, re- and reconnect with the story it's not like uh, a book where you've read it and then it goes back up on the shelf you can constantly dip in and out yeah definitely oh thank you guys it's like i was so pleased when you said that you would be up for <laughs> interviewing it feels really surreal to be honest though yes <laughs> like when you listen to like you listen to shows and podcasts and Kendall Mountain Festival and yeah like, it wasn't that long ago where I was trying to think how do you even get into trail running like how do you do that <laughs> but I love that I love that that you've just come up with an idea and you've gone I want to do this and you carried on and you've carried, because it's, it, there's so many similarities with the podcast as well as like, well, we, oh, came, really? <laughs> we came up with this idea. We don't really know what we're doing. And then you slowly like learn more and more and you make contact tax and you, but you also are so lucky. We're so privileged that you got to have that like real special moments with people that mm-hmm. shared stories, um, shared stuff, probably that they wouldn't share with some of their nearest and dearest as well. And they, and they put it on the book and we have the same with the podcast that people will open up a little door, a little window of their lives and share it with us. And it's always from a good place, isn't it? Because it's like, I've been through this and I want others to know that if they're perhaps they're going through something that they, there is light, there is hope. And, and for us, it's all about, we get that from being outside, being out in nature with friends, connecting with people. And the book is, is resonates in so many ways like that. So thank you. Thank you for writing it. Gary, grab me a copy when you're down. Cause I will do. I will, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll do. But yeah, anyone who there's always, I think about, oh, I'd like to do this. And quite often I put little roadblocks or hurdles or a bit of friction between me and doing something. But anyone who has an idea and sees it through to fruition, I salute you. Big, big kudos. Before you go, though, we have our quick five questions. Let me scroll. Have we asked any of these already? No, no, they're quite, they're quite, um, uh, they're quite out there. I don't know. I was in a fun (laughs) mood. Okay. Question one. (laughs) If you were reincarnated as an animal, what would you choose and why? Oh, I've always thought that it would be really fun to be a squirrel because like they <laughs> they they can jump between trees and you can like you can sort of buzz around quite a lot. I think they just look like they have quite a lot of fun. <laughs> I love the fact that that question didn't face you. You'd already you'd thought, <laughs> yeah, I I totally think about this all the time. The only thing I think with squirrels is a little bit rat like. They're a little oh, rodent feature. I've oh, never I've looked at I every time I see a squirrel, it's like I'm really happy to see a squirrel. And if I see a red squirrel, it's almost like made my day. There you go. <laughs> red squirrel, yes. Grey squirrel, they're in the bins. They're in the bins. <laughs> uh, how would you spend your days if you had unlimited time and resources? Oh, really, these are big questions. My goodness me. It's not a quick five. <laughs> <laughs> probably just running in the fells with a camera and, and a bunch yeah. of people because <laughs> it's pretty amazing really <laughs> but maybe because you've got so much resources as well you could be like couldn't we have a cafe just at the top of blank uh, yeah. yeah we have some tea and a bit of shelter <laughs> okay. little cafe on, on I have cafe. someone just following me around with a cafe <laughs> uh, staff you have some staff <laughs> running after you <laughs> Oh, you might need some technology. Have you got your smartphone nearby? Uh, yes. All right. Okay. What is the most used emoji on your phone right now? 
Ooh. We've done a test to work out what it is. So you need to go into WhatsApp okay. and then go as if you're going to type an emoji to somebody okay. and then see top left-hand corner what it is. Is that so uh, What when you get on the little tie thing? Oh, mine's a yeah. laughing face. Laughing face. Laugh. Laugh. See, it's good. They're all positive. I like that. Mine was a thumbs up. Yours was a love heart. Love heart. Yeah. Oh. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bringing it, bringing it back to books. What was your favourite book from your childhood? Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I just loved that story. I loved the BBC series too. Of that, that's when they made proper children's programmes as well. <laughs> Never liked any of the sequels though. Couldn't get into those. Yeah, I think like the idea that you could just disappear into a magical world through a wardrobe, which is something that was in pretty much every house. So it made made magic very accessible. <laughs> Although, I mean, as a kid, you checked every wardrobe everywhere. And <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know it kind of flipping it to horror movies. I never used to like the horror movies that were in people's houses because I could oh, identify yeah. <laughs> with things under beds, things in the Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> things in the toilet. No, I didn't like Sorry. any of that. <laughs> Okay, last question. Every week we share the podcast over on Instagram and you get to choose the music. What is your Instagram story music going to be? Oh, blimey. Oh, now that one is... It's going to have to be a good one because the book is like so... It's going to be a pretty heavy piece of music, isn't it? Can't be... Oh, no. Oh, I'm really bad with like... with. Um, oh, I'm totally blank on that one. Can I send it to you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a deadline because if you don't, I choose it for you. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, okay. Oh, because that feels like I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to think about that one. Or maybe it's heavy metal. If it's left to me, Edwy's Disney classic. Edwy, well, Ed, Eddie's not, Disney classic. Well, maybe not Disney classic. I'm thinking of like Beethoven, Claire de Lune, or something like that. Some sort of beautiful seasonal music yeah I, there's a bit of culture in me gary you know it's a bit not... of culture <laughs> <laughs> see i think uh because i'm i'm really i'm really I, i'm listening to smoky joe and the kid all the time at the moment but i'm just not i can't think whether that's appropriate to go on top of the book <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, but this is a tricky thing isn't it <laughs> yeah so maybe you're something right with like um something more classical there was um there was like this piano man busker, which is which was um, a guy that we came across when we were traveling in New Zealand, and it was the most beautiful piano music. And we listened to it every time we were driving through grand landscapes, and it just made those landscapes feel. This is what we need. Amazing. So maybe you know I'll, I'll send the you piano. You know the answer, Dave, the publisher. He yeah. would if he said, "What Dave on it? What <laughs> music yeah. are we going to sell this book to?" He'd be like. <laughs> Well, I've done this before. I don't know why. I've... Um, cool. Okay, yeah. Okay. Well, we wait to see. We wait to hear. You've got a. You got two weeks. Okay. Okay. You've got plenty yeah. of time. But if you have, you know, <laughs> raindrops in my head or something like that. <laughs> well, cool. Thanks for your time today, Danielle. Super generous. Uh, yeah, really enjoyed the chat. And people, yeah, we'll have the links where you can access the book. Uh, yeah. Short some love. Go and short some love, everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's been brilliant. Thanks. Take care. Bye bye. Oh, fingers crossed they've got that book in stock when I'm over the lake, said he. We booked a, a long weekend away, actually, at Fawnside Farm Cottages. So we are pretty excited about that. And it's only a, ooh, a five, ten minute drive from Keswick. So I'll be going to, I think the bookshop's called Bookends. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed they've got one in stock. Also, Danielle will be at the Kendall Mountain Festival along with Rena McGregor and Andy Berry previous guests of the show so yeah if you fancy a Kendall Mountain Festival it's not something I've ever been to but we're I waiting, do... waiting for our invite Gary why everyone else signed up <laughs> that's just fills me with dread but yeah yeah check it out it looks awesome Tales from the trails. First up, as always, our Strava Club. And if you want us to show you some extra tales from the trails, love, you need to change your Strava to 
open <laughs> because unfortunately yeah we can't um share your antics um but yeah took the lead over for the mileage jaw turn 119 miles and things that really pricked my curiosity because there's not many people unless it's an event will be doing 119 miles so yeah really curious jaw what you've been up to but regardless of that well done john oh is that john Haas or john Hayes? Yeah, how would you Hayes. Yeah, yeah now john is the opposite. So much detail over on Strava. I loved it. He had lots of zone one work, zone two work, interval sessions, Garmin graphs, uh, threshold runs. Super impressive, John. Yeah, a big week and oof, 59 hours and 43 minutes and 18 seconds. That's a lot. Oh, my goodness me. I didn't check, actually. Maybe he is a multi-sport athlete of so the cycling and uh, is walking oh, and okay, swimming. Okay. <laughs> I guess that's a hell of a lot. Oh, I, yeah, I didn't see an event. So I'd be curious, actually, John, what you've been up to. But yeah, private Strava, Mike Raffin. Either way, well done. And you clocked up 16,814 feet. I was just of- having a sneaky check going, oh, I'm sure I did that much. <laughs> 15,300. Yeah, I must admit, I'm not going to say that that's soft, but we've had some big numbers in the past. Yeah, so, yeah, now I- the- well, that's what I was thinking, Eddie. Now's the time, not this week, <laughs> but next week. Um, just just one day, just one week. I want you to read my name out, Gary. That's all. You need to um, take a look on a on a Saturday evening and go on going hard on a Sunday. Can't be that person. I can't be that person. Oh, but I can. That's the sad thing. This week's Tales from the Trails comes from Neil Cornelius. Having just listened to another excellent podcast, I thought it was about time I sent him my Tales from the Trails story. Being born with a mild form of cerebral palsy resulting in being paralysed down the left side of my body, I never thought I would be very sporty at all, never mind end up as a trail runner. My disability means that I lack coordination, balance and strength in my left leg and I have very limited use of my left hand. Basically, this means I only have two useful points of contact, those on my right side. This rather limited the type of running I did. For many years, I was a road runner only. However, this all changed about eight years ago when a local park run started on a moderately hilly trail route in the local woods. I thoroughly enjoyed the challenge and after a few weeks joined a local trail running club. It was quite reassuring to find that other runners went over in the mud or tripping over tree tree routes, but maybe not as often as I did. After entering a few trail races, it became obvious that the trail running community is just so supportive from volunteers at feed stations, helping me fill my water bottles, marshals dragging me up muddy slopes, other runners helping me over styles, and even one race organiser asking me if there's anything they can do to make their events more nail friendly. It can get a little overwhelming at times, but it's just so wonderful. I accept that I won't be entering any races that involve clambering over rocks or require three points of contact, but I'm having so much fun that next weekend I'm paying for my first visit to the Lake District to try out some of the lower paths. And next June, I will be tempting my first 100 mile event. One slight worry is that out of the three times I've worn my T and Trails t shirt at park runs, I have gone over twice. Should I retire that? shirt keep up the good work neil cornelius don't retire the shirt neil <laughs> you may have fallen over but you've got back up and that is what the tea and trail shirt is all about neil oh neil keep us posted on how the training goes now it goes in the lake district please send us some photos love to see you out on those trails and Amazing. i'm curious what the race is actually if it's a lake district 100 miler in june or it Next is june, a... maybe south downs way that would suit him well because oh. you definitely don't need you just need your feet on the on that one so maybe that says what else is in june mm, there's a couple over and maybe there's a brecon beacons one let Ooh, us know goodness me. we love reading out your stories we love them uh, if you have a tales from the trails then please send it to hello at tntrails.com Danielle has been super generous this week and supplied us with a competition prize. One copy of her beautiful book, Why We Run, is up for grabs. Super simple, this one. You have two choices. You can follow... Fingers crossed. Okay, two choices. Follow Tea and Trails on Instagram or subscribe on our YouTube channel. Now, I I have a little confession here. Uh, I've only just subscribed to our YouTube channel. In fact, I've only just looked at it. (laughs) 
And all you if it's to... confusing, sorry, I've got to put in. If it's confusing, the YouTube channel is just my name, Gary Thwaites. So is it? Not... Okay, yeah. I see the way this is going. But all you have to do is <laughs> tick subscribe. I never did it because I thought, oh, you have to like have a YouTube account. This all sounds like complicated. Oh, no, no. It's super easy. All you have to do is just press subscribe on the YouTube channel. And when we share this week's show, either on Instagram, which we do on a Friday, or we upload it to YouTube on a Friday, pop the hashtag, why we run, tag a friend who inspires you to run, and we will pick randomly a winner in a week's time. All Patreons get an automatic entry, but you can, of course, perhaps enter twice, double your double your chances of winning. Five-star reviews. Gary, no five-star reviews. And I have five star reviews. Uh, nobody likes us this week. Everyone's busy. It's half term. Don't have time for that yeah. sort of shenanigans. There'll be more. They'll come flooding in. Please send us some. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does really help the podcast. We see this all the time, but it there's something weird in the Apple al- algorithm. These reviews oh, pop <laughs> pop our podcast in front of like minded people. So yeah, all of your reviews, five star reviews only. Sorry, uh, are a big help for the pod- podcast. I think this has been the quickest podcast I'm on recording. It. I'm on it. I literally I mean, like, <laughs> yep, yep, just yep, see yep. you like wind up. Come on, quick, quick, quick. <laughs> have, you know, you know when you have your office door shut and the volume slowly starts creeping up. We've had to stop <laughs> in the podcast already for to put the pizza order in. They've got so desperate that the oldest child is now ringing the restaurant to get the chef to get the pizzas Excellent. on. Who knows? I know what they're going to do. They're going to go. They're going to put extra pepperoni or something on mine or anchovies because fish or oh, anchovies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on then, rattle through this. Let's go on. Oh, what we're doing, what we're doing. So I have had to compulsory take. I so didn't want to. My Strava graph was a such a thing of beauty, Gary. It was like the straight line. Five weeks I have nailed the last five weeks. If you've been listening. Okay. It hasn't been easy. Oh my gosh, I feel so tired. But I've had a lot of people staying in my house and no help with children. No help. Of course, I've had help, but it's been a lot the last few days. So I I had planned I have to take three or four days with just a couple of, um, with just some easy runs. And I tell you what, the heart rate availability that has been, it's been low, but I thought that was normal, has now d- almost doubled. <laughs> goodness me that is epic (laughs) so it's been yellow for a long time and now it's green uh the last few days but you know i feel terrible guy just doing like 30 to 40 minutes worth of running a day when you used to like two and a half hours a day yeah and that run feels awful because you're like oh god you come out the routine but anyway be back on it tomorrow but it's good i mean i've got I've got, I'm healthy now, out the back of the cold. I've got no niggles. I am I would have carried on, but I think actually this is good because I've got time to do another, I'll do another volume block before the winter 200 now. And I think if I hadn't had this little downtime and just let a little bit of recovery come in, in another week or so, and then that's when I want to, in like 10 days, two weeks times, I want to do another big set of, double days so um you rolled the dice and came out the other side i love it oh so lucky anyway uh so i will i will get some i will get a session in this week at some point and i will do a long run but the long run will be probably just three hours and it will mainly be hiding from my children so it will probably be something nice <laughs> Uh, Lask, but uh, yeah, all is good. But, but I'll be back on it next week so, with some. Bryn did say, "Do you want me to? Take, should we take the kids away?" And I was like, "We, you, you could take the kids away. I, I could stay with the dogs because we can't. We, everyone's away. We haven't got a dog sitter." And he's like, "Oh no, we'll stay. We'd miss you." <laughs> <laughs> it was so close. So close. <laughs> I could be keeping up with the Kardashians season four on repeat. So close. But I know, yeah, as we all know, that the, when the kids go, like you're like that cup of tea in peace and then then you get then you're like when are you going back and then you start getting the photos you're like oh i'll be left out he knows me too well what about you back on it on it yeah i think i mean well i mentioned earlier this pre 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 marathon training Mm -hmm. plan currently it goes on because manchester really doesn't start until december so i've got oh my goodness me what we're looking about eight weeks um of this faffing on just doing minutes at 5k pace 10 minutes at heart rate zone four so i'm not too sure if i'm going to do this on the flat then that will be the 5k pace or i could go to the gym and do it on the treadmill 
And then I just need to hit that uh, zone four long, easy miles on Sunday, two hours. I say two hours. I've got a kind of coastal loop in mind. It might be two and a half hours. It might be two hours, 15. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, hopefully go back to the actual gym, go and lift some weights. And I will probably half the weight that I was lifting previously. I don't want to lift heavy and then go have doms for the 10 minute session. So ease go myself. Less weight, same, yes. same exercise as you did, just more reps, less weight. Keep a little tally for the next two weeks and just slowly put them back together. Food is improving, my goodness me, my diet, the fruit and vegetables, hydration, all of that is so much better. And I don't think I've had a pink jammy from Greg's in about ooh, two months. Oh. No yum yum. <laughs> I can't even think what you get a pink jammy confused with. <laughs> I'm trying to go down to the gutter. What were you thinking? <laughs> oh, jammy rhymes with. Took me a little. <laughs> oh God! I've never heard of a of a of a dark oh, <laughs> Pink jammy before you went. I haven't had a pink jammy in months. Oh my god! <laughs> but no yum yums either. So we're doing well. We're doing well. And what was a, a a momentous occasion? Bake off in our house. We always see if it's bread week. We'll have pizzas. If they do a chocolate week, we'll have chocolate cake. We'll our treats will match the theme of bake off. Oh, you guys. I didn't. I didn't have any treats while they were eating their on their treats. I put that in my. My little arsenal that I fall back on when the when the going gets tough. I don't in think I do that when I was in the pre 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 <laughs> stages of my training plan. I I would be doing that now for me in the next five weeks. I'd be like, no, oh, Eddie, think of the legging, oh, yeah. think of the photos. <laughs> God. I'll put that in there when I'm crying a fuse deal next July. I'll be going. Yeah, yeah. that thing, Jimmy. If I had that big jammy. <laughs> but I am going, which is uh, going to be really good, actually, because as me, my oldest child, is looking at universities. So we are going to Glasgow on Friday. Check out the Glasgow School of Art, Big City, Train Journey, and a day with my daughter at the School of Art. I just think that's going to be perfect. Um, she knows I'm motivated by food. And the <laughs> gossip is that we are going to check out some nice uh, hotspots in Glasgow, but no running that day because it's going to be an early start and probably late home too. I really love it when you get off a train in a big city and you just see it for the first time. It's just like, oh, it's super exciting. Like you get out the train in King's Cross and it's just busy, busy, busy. I absolutely I love. get out of the train in a big city and go, get me the Get hell me out of it. Off. Well, yeah, about two days later, I'm like, get it's me home. But, uh, <laughs> but that is my week. Right, enough of this. I can hear. We listen carefully. We, we can hear the pizza order going in. Oh, I wonder what you're going to have. I'm curious. Je vous peux commander beaucoup de pizza. Oui, 20, oui, oui. You've lost me again. Uh, <laughs> can I order a lot of pizzas? 20, 30. <laughs> right, enough of this. Got things to do. My to-do list is overflowing. It's an absolute disgrace. I've had a few emails saying, did you receive that email? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I hear those emails. Patience, dear friend, patience. Thanks to our partners and pa patrons for their patience, new and old. Be kind to yourself. I've had to do this a few times in the last couple of days. Single parenting, breathe and believe. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow and give us a share. Tell your mates, tell your running buddies. In fact, just about tell anyone. And I'll tell you what, our new favourite love, make us, a, make us a reel and tag us in. Well done for getting to the bitter end. You are all awesome. We hope you all have the best of weekends. Also, best of luck to everyone towing the line and everyone involved in organising the 2023 OM. I really hope, my goodness me, I really hope it's just not a weekend of rain, rain, rain. I've not checked the forecast. Be polite to the marshals and be kind to your running buddy too. It's a team effort. This time next year, Gary, you and me. I've had an offer, actually. My heart like that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't um 100% committed to it yet, but uh, <laughs> look at your face. Go to YouTube <laughs> anyway. On the way to Wales, why not listen to the UK's number one trail running podcast and warm yourself up with your favorite brew? 
My name is Gary Thwaites. And I'm Eddie Sutton. You're disgusted, Eddie Sutton. <laughs> and that was... Jumped. Jumped. <laughs> Over YouTube. And that was, ep- <laughs> and that was episode 44 of Tea and Trails. Mm-hmm.